Well, good afternoon. It's Wednesday again, April the 1st. Jennifer received a text or email from a friend that said that all the kids are going to have to repeat school the next year, repeat the same grade, and then she found out it was a hoax. So it is April 1st. It's not a hoax that we're still under this quarantine, that our nation is uh, still trying to deal with this virus, the corona, COVID-19 virus. And we miss not being able to meet with you. We look forward to the time when we can be back together again for worship and for Bible study and prayer meeting. Please, if you have any prayer requests, send them to us and we'll be sure to pray at home and we'll also share those prayer requests on Wednesday nights and possibly on Sunday mornings. You know, the Bible says that there's a time and a season for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, that famous passage of Scripture, tells us that there's a time to tear down, a time to mend, a time to be silent, and a time to speak. And this may be a time in which we as Christians will have the opportunity to speak about our faith. You know, I used to work in a secular work environment, and many of you, you do every day, and your co-workers may not be Christians. Some may say they're Christians, but their behavior uh, speaks otherwise. Recently, David Abrego shared with us during his communion devotion that he was with some friends at work, and they were talking about worshiping God out on the bay. Uh, we sometimes have to bite our tongue, so to speak, because we want to speak up and say something, but we wonder if it's the right time and place. I remember one time years ago when I worked for Guilford County in North Carolina, I spoke up and said, well, the Bible says such and such, and I was quickly admonished by my boss that the Bible was just another book and that I shouldn't bring religion into this topic or subject. And so I learned early on that not everyone wants to know or hear what the Word of God has to say. But we're in a crisis now, and people are dying. And when death is at the door of, of a country or a family, an individual, they're oftentimes more receptive to things that are spiritual or supernatural even. And many who have some type of Christian background would like to know what the Bible does say uh, during a time like this. I just recently read online a devotion. I think it's called the Denison Forum, and some of you are familiar with it. But recently in Italy, one of the doctors wrote this. His name is Julian Lorenzo. He's 38 years old. He lives in Italy where he's been right on the forefront of fighting with this coronavirus epidemic or pandemic. And he said this and when it was translated into English of course he said until two weeks ago many of my colleagues as well as myself were atheists 100% of us believed that science excludes God from the conversation as educated doctors he said I used to look at my parents and mock them going to church he said, a 75-year-old clergyman arrived nine days ago on the scene. He was a man that was poor. He was struggling to breathe, but he always had a Bible in his hand. He would read it to the patients as they were dying, and he would read it very quickly. And then he would place the Bible in their hands, and he would look at the Lorenzo goes on to say that he and his colleagues realized that there's only so much they can do when dealing with this virus. He said, as human beings, we have reached our limits. There is nothing we can do except increase the death toll of the people we care about. And he said, now we believe there has to be something besides what we can see or what we know from science. They actually are leaning towards being agnostic or at least becoming some type of believers in some type of God. But you and I know that if we're going to have a voice during this time, it's important that we have character before the crisis comes. And I just want to talk about that for just a few minutes because we've been studying from the book of Daniel in the Old Testament on Wednesday nights. And Daniel, as we talked about last week, was able to rise up to the occasion and be able to save not only he and his colleagues, his Jewish brothers, 
but also all of the people that were asked to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dream. You see, Daniel had established his character before the crisis came. And that's important for us today. Daniel, early on, chapter 1, verse 17, asked that they put them to a test. He said, give us only kosher vegetables and watch what God will do. We have faith that if we don't eat unclean food, according to our religion, we'll be just as healthy after 10 days. And so they put them to a test, and it turned out that they were even healthier uh, after eating just these, these vegetables. And so he established his faith with those that were in positions of influence. So later on, we see him being able to communicate with the man who was put in charge of executing all of these astrologers, magicians, and these people that were supposed to be able to interpret. It was his character prior to this. He and his comrades, his, his brothers from Israel, that allowed them to be able to speak in the crisis. And so there are four qualities if we think about his his being catapulted to success and being put in charge of more things in the kingdom. That was his character, his conviction, his courage, and his consistency. Character is formed when we choose to do what is right when given the opportunity to do what is wrong. Phillips Brooks said that character is manifested by great moments, but it's made in the small ones. Freeman said that character is not made in crisis, it is only exhibited in crisis. And so we know that if Joseph, when he was in Egypt, if uh, Daniel, uh, Abraham Lincoln, Honest A, uh, Billy Graham, and so many others had not had good character prior to the crisis that they went through, people would not have listened to them. The reason the king listened to these men was because they had great reputations. Someone said, it's not the crisis that builds something within us. It simply reveals what we're made of already. D.L. Moody defined it this way. He said that character is what you are in the dark. And a person's character determines how he interprets God's will. Chambers wrote one time, the legendary UCLA uh, coach Bob, or John Wooten said this, your character is more important than your reputation. Your character is what you really are. Your reputation is only what people think you are. And so I'll end this devotion tonight by saying maybe you and I didn't have good character before this crisis and people may not want to listen to us. Or maybe we did. Uh, if we did, then we need to be speaking into people's lives. There's so many great illustrations from what's happening with this COVID-19 virus. Uh, for instance, we're hearing about people being able to give blood and that blood being used to help to heal other people or come up with a vaccine. What a great illustration of the blood of Christ and how his blood is going to heal us of our sins. There are so many other opportunities in which we're going to be able to, to speak out, especially now, but also afterwards. And maybe we, we're saying right now, well, I just don't have great character. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. Well, this is an opportunity to reinvent, to renew yourselves and prepare for after this. There'll be another crisis that comes along. And we'll have that opportunity if we build character and integrity with people in the days to come. I hope you're sheltering in place. I hope everyone is well. And again, we will have a message on Sunday as we prepare for Easter. This is probably going to be the, the first Easter in most of our lives in which we weren't able to go to church. But I can promise you, I'm, I'm hoping to be up on Easter Sunday morning as the sun comes up with a sunrise service and also We'll have a message for those that get up later on. We might try to live stream one of those. I hope you have a blessed evening, and I want to end in prayer. Father God, thank you again for this time in which you've allowed us to get together around our computer or whatever device, our phone, and listen to you speak to us through your word. 
Lord, I pray now that this virus will not uh, take any more lives, that people will be able to stay safe, and we pray for healing, Lord. We ask that you heal our nation, that you heal this world, that they might come to you in faith and obedience in the future. We love you, and we pray all of this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen.